I've got another installment of Racer Mice Robotics today, and today we're going to talk about servo motors. Here's your DC motor, your motor controller, and your potentiometer. PWM signal coming in, and you have plus, uh, in this case, plus six volts and ground. The motor turns, winds up turning this potentiometer, and the circuit in here is basically taking that PWM signal and trying to match the voltage that's coming uh, across here it will wind up moving that potentiometer by moving its gears. Let's look at the other side. Okay. And as I pop this open, you're gonna see, dun dun dun. The gears that wind up running the servo. And if I pop this open, This is the guy that the horn sits on, and it winds up turning. It sits basically on top of the potentiometer. So that final stage in the gear motor uh, whoops, that final stage in the gear motor also turns the potentiometer. Now, there's also a little stop on here. You'll see that little nub there. And that works as a physical stop so that the uh, gear doesn't totally wind itself up. You'll see it like locks itself against it in there. Put that back down in there. Should in there. Engage that gear. Now you'll see as I turn that. And if I'm lucky, I should be able to hmm. get everything to match back up. You can hear, even without the motor inside, that noise is the gear train. Okay, now, so, what happens if I try to run this motor without that attached? Now, so, without the, I'm gonna plug it into my little RC receiver here. Now, without the gear train, without the gearbox on there, this thing is probably spinning, oh, I don't know, it, it's definitely in the, into the thousands of RPMs, I would guess. Um, so my definite is a guess. <laughs> so you're gonna probably see that spin awfully fast as I attach this. See if I can get this stop. I can almost get it to stop. There. And so this is how a continuous rotation servo would work. Basically, I would center this to get that, you know, just that exactly halfway. And I'm going to trim it a little bit as well. There. And then it just goes in either direction forever. So the way to do that would be some people take the potentiometer out entirely and just replace it with uh, a basically a voltage divider, you know, two resistors uh, in place of the potentiometer. 
And other times they just kind of glue this in place at center and maybe cut the top off so that it doesn't engage with the gears over there. So if all goes well at this point, um, <laughs> even without, i do something crazy. I'm just going to try to plug it right back in. It's asking for trouble, right? See why this is probably not the strongest servo in the world. See those tiny, tiny, tiny little teeth, tiny little plastic gears. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, trust this with too much weight. I got it right that time. What it means to be a servo motor is it means you have some type of positional feedback, some type of feedback and control built into the motor that allows it to get a signal and then move to that signal. So it has kind of built in control. And um, it usually implements that control through some type of feedback loop. All right. All these servos in here have some type of, generally they start with some type of positional feedback. Um, some of that's been bypassed in order for them to be kind of continuous rotation. But they generally, they all start off with this idea of basically having a little DC motor inside, a gearbox inside, a motor controller inside, and then a little potentiometer that tells it, allows it to figure out exactly where it is. You'll notice most of them have that same typical three wire connector with one exception. This guy over here um, is kind of neat in that he's, uh, you know, not all that crazy as far as servo goes, but he's got this additional wire and that allows you to uh, basically uh, look to see where the position of the servo is. So it has analog feedback. You can read the servo. I can read the potentiometer directly in the servo from the outside, so it's really kind of neat to be able to uh, see what's what with that servo. Okay, so what else is different about these guys? Well, uh, all of them, uh, they have different, a lot of them have different voltages that can, they can carry. Some can go up to like almost 12 volts. Usually they're around 6 volts, uh, 4.8, uh, and so on. Uh, they have uh, different geared boxes. They have different speeds. Uh, some are all metal gears. You'll see like the metal gear on here. Some are all plastic. Some will rotate 360 degrees. Some will rotate continuously. Some will rotate only 60 degrees. And there's a variety of form factors as well. Like here's a, a high speed steering servo. It's very flat, meant to go in kind of a rack and pinion steering in like a drift car or something like that. Uh, very useful for a lot of things. Pretty beefy uh, and very, very quick. This is a robotic servo, very beefy gearbox in there. Handles something like, you know, at uh, 12 volts, it'll do, you know, in excess of uh, dozens of uh, uh, kilograms, centimeters uh, worth of torque on this guy. It has actually inside a little uh, brushless motor. Uh, it's not a brush DC motor, but a brushless motor in there and a little uh, electronic speed controller in there. Very, very neat. This is a winch. Uh, sail winch motor, very strong, but also can do a full 360 degrees. Um, this is a continuous servo. It's been modified inside. It has all metal gears. It's another continuous one. This is a nice beefy full metal gearbox in here. High tech, very nice uh, for a standard size servo. And then we've got two, two other little servos here. You get into your micro servers and your mini servos. Uh, and they come in kind of the normal, typical kind of micro servers as well. But you can also get them like full metal gears and things like that as well. And you can also get these in different sizes, uh, or excuse me, different things like um, different speeds, and even some of them come with that same kind of analog positioning feedback. So 
Do your homework when you figure out, you know, how strong you want your servos to be, uh, depending on the application. A lot of them, you know, these are basically position. This is all about positioning things, not about rotating continuously, although some of them can be modified to do that. So they're kind of self-contained. They have their motor controller in there. They usually have some type of feedback system. That's what makes them a servo motor as opposed to just a continuous motor with a uh, controller in there. So, yeah, if you need to, you know, have an elbow joint or some type of joint in a robot or, you know, be able to position something fairly accurately, this is usually the way you do it in a, uh, in a robotic application. Now, stepper motors, which is a different type of motor, uh, also provide you some way to really precisely position things, but they require a lot more power. That's a whole nother video for another time. So... Any questions, post them down in the comments and we can talk about all the different types of servos. These come from a variety of places, everything from Adafruit to SparkFun to Hobby King to um, Servo City. Uh, yeah, her, yeah, Adafruit and some just Amazon ones, things like that. Uh, I'll post some of the links down in the, uh, the section below to talk about specifics on them. Okay, till next time, this is Eraser Mice Robotics.